Hi, this is Tom from X-Force PC and today we're going to talk about the Virtual Fly Vernio Throttle Prop Mixture Control that's just come onto the market. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how exactly it works within X-Plane. Uh, but first of all, I just want to make a brief comment about the price. It's very expensive. However, if you want a throttle prop mixture today, the only other one I think you can get on the market, there may be some other one somewhere, but is an actual second-hand Cytec throttle prop mixture control. Uh, uh, Logitech doesn't make them anymore, and, but there are, they are on the market, and they also are quite expensive, but they don't have all the features that this one does. So let's talk about the features. First of all, on the throttle, uh, like a regular plane, you have a locking ring here that will make the, the travel of this stiffer, and of course, in a real plane, the purpose of this is to keep the throttle from moving out of position, especially when you've trimmed the plane out and you're flying uh, basically level flight. And you don't want the vibrations from the engine moving this throttle back and forth, so you can kind of tighten this up a little bit and it will make it quite uh, uh, stiff in there and it will not move. Obviously, with a regular flight simulator, you don't need that because you're not getting all that vibration. But this does try to simulate exactly what a plane would be like. And you can also make it a little looser so it feels pretty much like you would do if you have a real plane. Okay, the second uh, control here is the propeller control. And in order to get it to move out, you have to press in this button and that eases it up so you can move it out and in. Otherwise, it's locked in. However, it has a vernier control on it here where you can turn it in and out if you want to do fine controlling uh, with this particular uh, controller here. And uh, a similar thing with the mixture control. And you can move it in by pressing the button and then you can fine tune it by turning the vernier in and out. Um, at the bottom, you see here, it has a very nice uh, sturdy clamp. And as long as you don't have a lip underneath your table, um, this will fit quite nicely. Uh, even a little bit of a lip will work fine, but if, it come, if the uh, sort of skirt comes out too far, it won't work properly. Uh, but this is a uh, fairly stout little clamp here, and this is obviously metal. And in addition to that, you can actually uh, take the front off and use this in a panel. So you can take the, uh, the clamp off altogether and just slide it into a slot on a panel and fix it in there with screws that are provided. Uh, it's quite heavy, and so uh, once you get it clamped in, it's not going to move around very much. Okay, uh, the question you might have is, what is the value of having a controller like this, uh, TPM, Throttle Prop Mixture Control? And if you're a real-world pilot, of course, and you fly a Cessna, say a 182, um, that has a constant speed prop, you know exactly what these are used for. However, it might be a little bit more mysterious to you, so I'm going to show you what the value is. Uh, on the screen up here, I have a page from the Pilot's Operating Handbook for this particular type of plane, 4172. And you'll see here, if your pressure altitude is somewhere between 2,000 and 4,000 feet, uh, and you want to set your RPM, uh, 2,300 uh, RPM, then you'll get 61 brake horsepower, uh, you'll get about 105 uh, knots indicated airspeed, and you will be consuming uh, about 8.6 uh, gallons per hour of fuel. If you come across here, the temperature here is more like what it is, or say normal temperature in your area, uh, plus or minus uh, zero degrees, and you'll see slightly different numbers here, such as 57, 104, and 8.1. Well, when you're actually uh, tweaking then your mixture, you can tweak the mixture to get exactly that number, which is kind of the recommended fuel, most efficient fuel flow for the Cessna 172 at that altitude to get that particular type of speed. And that's, of course, how real-world pilots um, are able to minimize the amount of fuel they're using while they're cruising. Uh, so it, it acts just like a, a real plane and with that very, very good fine-tuning. Uh, on the older uh, TPMs like the SciTech, you didn't have 
a vernier. So you were basically pushing it in a nut and you had to kind of fiddle with it till you got it to more or less where you want it to be, whereas this simulates exactly what a real plane will operate like. Uh, these, these charts here come from the uh, pilot's operating handbook of the particular plane you're flying. And let's say you're flying a 172 and it's maybe representing one that was built in the late 80s or something. You can find a pilot operating handbook on eBay just for that particular model of plane. And so you can feel like you're really flying exactly the way it was in the real world. Um, sometimes the model of the 172 that you're flying, they're not quite specific as to what year model it was. And there are differences when they made design changes. But this is pretty close to what reality will be. So you can actually fly the plane most efficiently, not only for fuel flow, but also for the engine because it also gives the uh, gives you the sort of uh, exhaust gas temperatures are the most efficient and also that the plane that the engine itself is being properly lubricated by the by the flow of, of uh, fuel that's going through it. Okay so here we are I've got the plane up at uh, 4,000 feet exactly and we're flying along with uh, our throttle all the way in and with our mixture all the way uh, rich. And how the plane is performing, we're flying at about 125 knots. Our RPM is about 2600 RPM right at the red line and our fuel flow is 17 gallons per hour. So we want to, we want to fix that because we don't want to keep flying like that. So the first thing we do is we pull a little bit back on the throttle and we're going to pull the throttle back until we get 2,500 RPM on the engine. So I'm going to do that very slowly so that it stabilizes. We do tend to overshoot a little bit sometimes, but that's at about stable at 2,500 RPM. Now according to the pilot's operating handbook, uh, at 4,000 feet and at 2,500 RPM and at this temperature, uh, we should be able to get to a nice, efficient flow of fuel at about 9.5. And so what I'm going to do is to start backing out the uh, mixture with the vernier uh, until I get 9.5 gallons per hour. And just do this very, very slowly. And you can see it coming out to about 9.5 gallons per hour. Now you won't see this very well if you're just looking at the simulated gauge on, on the uh, cockpit panel, but if you put in the data uh, presentation, then you'll be able to, to do it right exactly to 9.5. Once you do that, you sort of look at your RPM and your RPM stable at 2500, and you're over at 9.5 gallons per hour, and if you go read your airspeed, you'll find that your airspeed here is exactly at uh, 110 knots and that's exactly what is predicted uh, by the chart and the pilot operating handbook is it roughly about 110 to 115 knots and so right now the plane is set up for a nice uh, cruise speed uh, you've got your engine slowed down to 2500 rpm uh, you've got your fuel flow at its most efficient at 9.6 it's neither too rich nor too lean and everything's fine and so you can sit back and have a very comfortable flight. So once again this is the uh, Aerofly Vernio throttle prop mixture control and uh, it's a great uh, adjunct to your flight simulator.